Hey everyone, here I have a bonus video where I'm going to show you how I am going to set up for cabling in this assembly. I put this assembly together to show some other concepts related to creating a flat harness, but I figured I might as well show you how I set up this particular assembly and its sub-assembly for cabling. So here in this particular assembly, I've got a panel, I've got a bunch of different boxes, I've assembled some D38999 connectors in here. Some of them are C size, but there's one F size connector in there. And I have a bunch of clips on here. I'm going to create a separate sub-assembly for the cable harness that I'm going to wrap because that reflects how I'm going to fabricate it, how I want the bill of materials to look, and how it's going to be plugged in later on from a manufacturing perspective. So let's start off by creating a new sub-assembly in here. I will click on the Create button. And here we have the Create Component dialog box. Let's change this to sub-assembly. Let me call this my electronics. LRU line replaceable unit harness. I'm not going to fill in the common name. I'll click the OK button. And here it is suggesting a template for me to use. Let me use my standard template. Looks good. Let's click the OK button. And now I will locate it using the default constraint. Let's hit the check mark. Now I've got my sub assembly. This subassembly needs a skeleton model, so I will click on it with the left mouse button and then select the activate icon with from the mini toolbar. And that makes the subassembly the active model. So when I click the create button this time, I'll be creating a component inside of here. Let's change this to skeleton model. I'll leave the default name that Creo Parametric suggests to me. Let's click the OK button. And yeah, let's use our standard start part. So that is good. The reason that I have the skeleton is I'm going to use a shrink wrap for grabbing references from in here. But before I do that, I know I want a bunch of different axes. Let me turn on the axis display. And I see the axes from the box show up over here. I really don't care about those axes. I really want the axes from the little clips down here. They aren't showing, so let's use layers. I'll click on the layers icon. I have that added to my quick access toolbar. Again, I highly suggest that you customize the quick access toolbar. Otherwise, you can go to the view tab to get to the layers dialog box. And I'm going to use the pick icon over here to select the clip. And I can see that, oh, here we have a layer that's hidden. Let me change this to show and then Zoom in, zoom out to repaint the screen. That's good. That gives me the axis visible that I'm going to grab. Let's now activate the skeleton model. Again, I'll choose the icon from the mini toolbar. You'll notice that the ribbon changes to reflect part mode. And inside of here, I'm going to create a shrink wrap feature. And right now, the method is set to outer shell. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I'm getting away from using outer shell or auto collect all solid surfaces. I'm going to click no out of there. Uh, I am now partial to selecting the references manually. I'll do that in another shrink wrap feature. I'm going to create two shrink wrap features because there's one I want to just grab the connectors real quick. So let me choose subset. And right now, everything is set to consider. Let me change these four to consider so that they're explicitly considered. And then I'm going to set everything else to ignore. There we go. So that way, this particular shrink wrap feature will contain only these particular connectors. That is good. So let's click the open button. And let me go to the properties tab and I'm going to call this shrink wrap connectors. So that's good for that one. And just mention one reason why I have been getting away from just creating a shrink wrap of everything using the consider button. Shrink wraps 
have to be managed. You have to clean them up from time to time because what happens is if you are still designing this particular assembly and you're adding more components, all those additional components will be added to the shrink wrap, which can make it very heavy. So what I've been doing more now, this is weird. Let me open this up in its own separate window. Figure out what is going wrong here. Let me make sure that I'm gonna change my accuracy. Let's use absolute accuracy. Really the suggested default value is like 0.0039. I'll use 004. Let's hit the regenerate button. There we go. Yeah, so another thing to note about using data sharing features, really interesting that this failure happened, is that using relative accuracy can be an issue. I need to go into my start parts and change them so that they are using absolute accuracy. I never changed that and it's starting to bite me in the butt from time to time. All right, let me go back to this particular skeleton. Let's activate it. And now I'm going to create a, another shrink wrap feature. And this time, instead of using auto collect all solid surfaces, I'm going to use manual collection. Let's use that and then go to the references tab over here for the always include surfaces. I know I need this surface over here. Let's grab some of the surfaces from the boxes that I can use as a visual reference. Let's see this one, this one. Just getting the top and the front surfaces. I don't think I need any other surfaces from the panel for routing, but what I do want to grab, oh yeah, let's grab some of these cylindrical surfaces from the clips as a visual reference. Then I'm gonna grab the axes. And I'm holding down the control key as I'm grabbing them. And really, I don't need the surfaces if I'm going to grab the axes for routing the cable harnesses. But it'll just help me see them because these clips are pretty small. All right, so now I've got all the surfaces that I want. Now I'm going to click in the Include Datums Collector. And that way I can grab the axes that I will use for routing. All right, so that's good for this one. Let me just call this shrink wrap surfaces, even though I also got axes. Hit the check mark for that one. And now you can see I'm getting stipling because I've got the surfaces copied and plus I'm seeing them on top of the original geometry. So let's select the skeleton and hide it in the assembly. I don't need the axes here anymore and Let's open up the assembly in its own separate window. Hit the open button. Let's bring it back. All right, so now I've got all the visual references that I need for assembling my connectors and back shell. So let's do that. Uh, let's see, let me hit the assemble button. And let me find where, oops, where are my connectors? And let's see, inside of here, I'm going to use some D38999926s, which are plugs. And the first one I'm going to put in here is going to be the F size connector. I'm just using a generic F size size in here. And the first thing I need to pick is a cylindrical surface. Let's grab this one over here. Uh, let's see, what's the, oops, I need to change my spin center. Uh, let's select this surface over here, I think. And then for, let's see, the angle offset, the surface. I mean, that's good. I mean, it is a plug in here, so I really don't care about the rotation angle. But if I wanted it to be pointed a certain way, let's try 90. Yeah, that's good. Let's hit the check mark over here. So there I have the first plug assembled in here. Uh, let's put a back shell on there. Let's hit the assemble button. By the way, I got the connector models and uh, also the back shells, I think, all from Amphenol, which, you know, it's really cool that they provide these models on here. Let's use a 38, which is straight. 
Here's the 19, which is the F size. And so let's see for assembling this one. Let's pick cylindrical surface. And then this surface over here, is that how it assembles? All right, so it's on there. It's a little rotated. Let's see. Let me go to placement tab over here. Yeah, cause it's got the allow assumptions in there. If I want to control the angle of it, I could do that, except I don't want to bother with displaying the planes in there and adding in another constraint for now. So for now, this is good. I'll go back and clean that up later on if I really care about the angle for the back shell in there. So those are the first two components. Let's now bring in the other ones over here, which will be C size for the connectors. Let's hit the assemble button. Let me go back to my 26 plugs. And right now, I'm just using generic ABC, you know, F size connectors in here. Later on, I'd figure out the number of pins, what clocking I'd want for poke yoke, and distinguish between which one that I'm using. But this is good for now, just for getting the components in here for doing the initial wiring. All right, let's select, let's see this surface. Uh, then I think I assembled to that one over there. And then for the angle offset, I can pick this surface. Again, if I really care, but, oops, hit the undo button. I don't know what I picked there. I was trying to double click on this dimension, change that to 90. That's good. And hit the check mark. Oops, I should have just right clicked and used new location, but I didn't do that. Uh, so it's not that big a deal. Just, you know, a few extra mouse clicks. So again, pick a cylindrical surface, pick the flat surface, uh, pick the dimension, or the angle offset surface clock at the right angle. Here's what I meant. Rather than hitting the check mark, if I just right mouse click and hold, I can choose new location and then just jump on to assembling it to this other place over here. Change that to 90. Let's hit the check mark. So now I've got those components in there and just taking a look at my reference geometry for the clips. Uh, let's see, let's throw some back shells in here. So again, I'll use the assemble button. Let me navigate to my folder with some back shells. I'll use some straight back shells in here as well. Let's see, for C size, that would be the dash 13. Ah, need to change my spin center. Still forgot to do that. All right, so let's see. Let's pick a cylindrical surface. Let's pick a flat surface. And for the angle offset, I'll just pick this surface for now. Oh, looks like I defined the constraints in this one differently. So it gives me the ability to plug in the angle. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the power of component interfaces. Really great functionality. All right, for this location over here, this surface, that surface, and for the angle offset, this surface over here. Let's go and change the angle for 90. And let's see, last location. Let me right mouse click and hold and choose new location. Pick my surfaces, angle offset surface, change this to 90 degrees. Good, that is great. So I will hit the check mark in here. Uh, so now I think I've got everything in here that I need for routing my wires and cables. I've got my connectors. I've got my back shells. So everything is set up in my subassembly. And so I hope you got some use out of those techniques, how to create a subassembly in an assembly, create the skeleton model, then create the shrink wraps for the reference geometry, and then assembling components using component interfaces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.